Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog from Montana. We are actually heading over to a cool snake collection in the Rolling Turd as always. I hope the start of your day is amazing and I hope that we're gonna have a great day together. We're gonna end it tonight in Rapid City, South Dakota. That's kind of our last big stop. We will hit a little stop in Chicago and then we are back home. So we are getting closer and closer to being back to the Reptarium. I miss Lori, I miss my crew, I miss my animals, I miss all that, but I'm having an absolute blast. And today is gonna be a blast too. So what do you say we gear up, hit the road, hit this collection, and then drive to Rapid City. Let's do this. days into this trip nine days ten, something ten, days, ten, ten days, days into this trip yeah. well remember when we started we said we weren't going to use the bathroom at all yeah. but only in emergencies number one never a number two but a number one but now we have an issue yeah. the uh, the tank is full just it's from the flushes the, and it started that so what do we do guys does anyone yeah, know how to do this we have to empty it. Where do we empty it and how do we empty it? I honestly... There's a set of tubes in the spare storage room. Yeah, but where do you put the tubes? You put the tubes in the on the other tubes and it should release all the lumen. But then know. where do you, where does that go to? On the side of the road? Wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's uh, one of the things we have to figure out today. Uh, but first we're going to stop off at Mixed Morphology, a cool ball python collection. I don't know if he has any other animals. I know he works with some cool ball pythons. Have some fun over there. Uh, he actually has an arm. RV hookup at his house. So I'm hoping that Jason, yes, so I'm hoping yeah. that Jason will be able to help us out because, uh, you know, I think it's nice if we stop off, hang out with him, Just drop off our urine, yeah. and uh, and move on. So <laughs> anyways, let's get over to Mixed Morphology. So we're here with Jason at Morphixology. Yeah, I'll put all the links in the description to his stuff. Go show him some love, tell him I sent you. Very nice organized collection that's the thing wow. I, I as soon as i come in i see it's just everything i love the tags the pictures everything's you know got the qr codes on it uh very very organized here and i love stopping at collections like this obviously it's your passion and you've been doing how long you've been into reptiles so far uh well oddly enough my wife and i were deathly afraid of snakes whoa um and my whole family is in that and through your videos, oddly wow. enough, we got our first snake, which we still have. It's just a banana male. Nice. Uh, and that, in three or four years, developed into this. Oh my gosh! Um, well, it's awesome, man. Yeah, and, and this will be. We're just now starting season three. Of season three. Oh my god, that's awesome. Well, we're gonna take a look and see the collection, see some cool stuff. We're gonna start with a project that's a little bit near and dear to my heart. Uh, good and bad. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and so get some scaleless head stuff first. So what do you got? Uh, well, I'll show you a. Obviously, there, we just have. A base, oh, just shit, perfect. Just a perfect. base morph, scaleless head. Um, you're, you're no stranger to this project. Yep, and you can see right here on the head where it's lacking scales. And basically what happened was we imported an animal from Africa years and years ago that was missing some scales on its head like this. And we were surprised when we bred it together that about half the babies came out scaleless heads. So we knew it was probably gonna be incomplete dominant. And then we raised them up and we bred them together. We ultimately produced scaleless ball pythons, which was absolutely insane, which is so cool. And you have a pied, you said too, right? I do, yeah. So I wanted to work it into some recessive stuff because yeah. that seems to be where everything goes. Sure. So. Someone did produce a pied scaleless, yeah. which was ridiculous. Oh so my God, look we, how beautiful so that we is. We actually hit three of these this year. Oh my God. This is the male I decided to hold back. And one of the interesting things about the scaleless head that you, I know you're aware of is it seems to screw with pattern and color yes, too. Yes, it does, yeah. And so I don't know if you noticed, there's actually like a two-tone yeah, two patterning tones, yeah. here. Uh, I mean, he's got a really nice high expression scaleless head in this case. And That's a beauty. That's so going to be amazing. We're, re we're repeating this pairing again this year to hopefully hit the female to hold back as well. You guys uh, might be interested in seeing this absolutely stunning animal. There is no doubt about it. Definitely really crazy beautiful. Look at this right here. This, of course, is a pastel scaleless Paul Python. Ooh, doggy, I tell you what. That one is ridiculous. Look at that. It's just, isn't it amazing how it just like cleans things up? It makes them super, super, you know, tight and stuff like that now uh you know it's it's just a wild project they do demand a little bit higher care though it's one of the things why we aren't producing them anymore is because it's just you know something that with the shed cycles and so on like that got to keep a pretty close eye on them and when you have a big collection it's a little hard to do so uh nevertheless i absolutely am stunned whenever i see them because they're just so shocking and it brings me back to that day when we first produced the first scaleless ball python what a day that was you know it's, it's definitely a wild ride but that's beautiful and you produced just one of them this year just one 
yeah, and if, I remember your video when you cut yours, yeah. you had uh, just one out of that clutch as yeah. well, and we only had four eggs on this. Ah, uh, so you were like... Passed on scaleless head to a scaleless head. Yeah. This uh, was actually my, my dad's... Uh, my dad's girlfriend cut this one. Oh my gosh. That's the only one in the clutch. So. Oh my gosh, what a yeah. trip. That is awesome. And again, just so you guys know, so one in four odd that you would produce a super. So with four eggs, you hit the odds perfectly. Right so that's not. awesome. Yeah. Moving on to some bigger snakes, or at least a semi-big snake here. Of course, we've got a Doomerl's boa, and this girl is a beauty. Oh my gosh, how long have you had these? Uh, so I picked up this girl two or three years ago, something okay. like that. This was my introduction to large constrictors. Okay, it's a good um, step. The yep. real big constrictors aren't legal here in Montana anyway, right. the berms and retics and that. Right. And to be quite honest with you, since I do most of this stuff on my own, that's yeah. just dangerous. Yeah, yeah, you probably want to stick with this one. I agree with you 100%. And you could tell she's looking a little chubby. This is uh, about the season when they start to kind of grow follicles, start to ovulate, usually here relatively soon. If I were to guess, I would say she's building for an ovulation. So this would be the first year you could potentially produce. Yeah, we tried last year, and I just don't think my male was old enough or ready yeah. yet. Um, yeah. But we are hoping to produce them this year. She's cool because she's a really dark kind of sooty yeah. numerals. Yeah. And my male is really bright kind of rusty colored so yeah, i'm so curious to see some really cool get. babies yeah. but you can start to see like right down here when you start to see that kind of distension of scales kind of the rounding of the belly and stuff like that that usually means that they're starting to build towards an ovulation again she may be there she may be another month or so off but she's definitely looking like she's got some follicular growth which is cool and baby doomerals boas are ridiculous so i wish you luck with that she's a beauty one of my favorite projects that i'm working on is ultramel right yeah i love uh, ultramel like, stuff i'll show you the big female that bred these even as an adult, they're, the wow. colors are just insane. You know? I tell you, that's a beautiful snake right there. Unbelievable. Again, Ultramel is a recessive mutation, similar to the caramel albino, but just a little bit different. Uh, absolutely incredible. That is a stunner. Well, and, and on, on, along that line, you know, you're working towards that purple Barney bowl. I wanted to work into more purples. So the male that I bred this was a cinnamon Ultramel. And so we made, we made more of them. I actually hit three of oh, these. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous, dude. Wow. So the that the, is crazy. the contrast is just crazy. You get those really deep kind of maroon colors and oh that and the gosh. bright oranges and that. Take this to the next step and add it to that pinstripe as well and you get the combination. Oh my god, I love it. Where it completely changes the color of the original wow. pin, adds this yeah. kind of bone white yeah. uh, dorsal stripe and brings the purples in. Yeah, and you've got that wide striping on it. That is crazy cool. Yeah, you definitely start to see, you know, again, I'm loving that type of purples and darks and I mean, absolutely rich colors, beautiful snakes, man. I love it, that's great, dude. So I did uh, GHI Mojave Possible Head Clown to a clown and hit everything I could have except the GHI Mojave Clown. Oh my gosh. Um, but we went ahead and held back the Mojave Clown female and these, the colors in this thing are just, Oh, They're just stunning it. with the really high bright white yeah. sides and it's just a great combination. I mean we produced that banana Mojave clown this year. It was actually banana enchi Mojave clown. Unbelievable. I love Mojave clown stuff. It's one of my favorite mutations when you get into that. So beautiful animal, really good. Look at the head pattern. It's, it's got so yeah, a little yeah. dot on its head. And then one of the other things I I really wanted to work on is a lot of hypo stuff. I think okay. it's underutilized. It's so underutilized. I tell you what, the hypo gene's recessive gene, and I don't know, I think people are sleeping on that because it's been around forever. Yeah. And for some reason, it, like it doesn't have that same allure a lot of the other recessive mutations. And I think it's a huge mistake because what it does to, to animals, it's incredible. Well, so. and one of my favorites to work with hypo is champagne. And yeah. people don't use champagne a lot because it's very overpowering. Right, yeah. One of my favorites in champagne, obviously, is the, the mimosa, oh. which is the hypo champagne. And yes. this one, I think, is also yellow belly. Oh, my gosh. But yeah. this is probably, probably my favorite. Uh, animal we've produced this year that okay. dark gray the bright orange Just tail and head a and a big ringer which is oh pretty common in champagne yeah and champagne for whatever reason they have that almost pied ringer stuff matter of fact the first time i produced a champagne hat pie it was like 50 percent white and i thought that it was a it was actually a hat i'm like oh my god my champagne was hat for pie the truth is for whatever reason when you produce especially into pie stuff black pastel stuff cinnamon stuff you get a tremendous amount of that white ringer on it this thing is a stunner though i love the contrast Jason, these are absolutely cool. So first off, you make the cages? I made these ones. Uh, I have to plug a buddy of mine, James, here in town. Okay. Uh, Big Sky Reptiles and Enclosures. He and I kind of started, this was the first round of okay. custom cages. He bought That's a big awesome. CNC and so we made them on yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, these are all my design though. That's but awesome. yeah. That's awesome. And of course, uh, you may recognize the backdrops a little bit. That's my boy, uh, Stuart at Universal Rocks. So you spent some time down there and- I did. I went down a couple years ago after you built the Reptarium. Yeah and spent some time with Stuart when I knew that these were on their way, that yeah. we were gonna need to build them. 
and uh, he and I worked together and I got some cool 3D it's ones in. It's amazing. I tell you, of course, beautiful carpet python here, nice striping on it and stuff like that. The cage is great. It's got a lot of terracing, you know, different things. You know, carpet pythons love to climb, so there's some nice climbing things. Love this feature here, this wood feature here, the kind of a banyan tree thing going on. Absolutely beautiful. You got this one, you've got the nice ledging in it. Again, wood from the, you said local? Yeah, all of the, the actual live wood pieces are harvested right here out of the yeah. river, uh, local to us. Uh, but I I wanted something, especially for the carpets, like you said, they like to climb and I wanted to experience watching them in like a natural yeah. environment. And like you say with your cages, every time I come in here, they're in a different place, they're nesting somewhere, yeah. they're perched, whatever. And they're fun to watch feed that way yeah. because I get to see like the natural reaction, especially of an arboreal snake. Exactly, love it, they look good. So uh, way to go, Stuart did it again. Some beautiful enclosures. This is a pretty cool gene here. This is actually a, a Huffman black pastel, right? Correct. So that's an allelic animal that kind of produces this really cool dark sooty animal. And then of course, uh, this was one of its offspring, right? Yeah, and so we bred him to a hypo pinstripe and since it's an allelic combo, you get all either Huffman or Black Pastel. This one happens to be a Huffman, a Huffman pinstripe, pinstripe head hypo. That's awesome. Again, those dark morph animals. I love the allelic nature of that animal right there. That's a crazy. And again, uh, just like Jason was saying, when it's allelic, that means when you breed it out, you have to produce both genes, right? So it's either a Black Pastel or it's a Huffman. You can't produce normals, but unfortunately, you also can't produce the allelic animal through that breeding. You have to have both sets on both sides of the animal to do that. But nevertheless, pretty cool gene. Huffman's another gene that I'm starting to get worked into some things and is actually pretty cool. I have a Helen just like you do. Just like <laughs> uh, Mine's not albino and be honest with you I don't know what she is. Oh my god she is crazy cool though I tell you what. So what's the genetics behind it do you know? Uh no because really? part of the problem is you know, she's not azanthic I'll tell you that. Right yeah. Um she was born with full color from okay. a from a lesser uh, pastel leopard GHI to a lesser pastel leopard. Right. So there were some bells and whatnot, but she's what I think is a super pastel, lesser or butter, whichever, leopard. Right. But for whatever reason, over the course of about two to three months, she lost she every lost ounce of her all, color. Yeah, lost all that stuff, yeah. We used to call that IMG, where you know an animal would like be increasing melanin gene. It's kind of a similar thing. They actually lose the uh, xanthophore, that yellow pigment. In this case, it didn't increase a lot of melanin, but it did decrease the xanthophore yellow, and it just looks stunning. Man, I tell you, if you could produce a snake like that, that looked like that every time, whoo, doggy, that would be insane. Another gene that I do not work with, but I really wanted to get into, is the desert ghost. I know you have a pinstripe desert ghost. Let's take a look at this thing real quick because that is crazy. Of course, pinstripe desert ghosts are uh, are some of my favorite because of course pinstripes, you know, I have a thing about pinstripes, right? But wow, just look at how clean that is. Recessive mutation just cleans things up. Just unbelievably beautiful. Uh, that's incredible. Are you working with any others or is this the only one? This is the only one I have for now. Uh, What's your plans? Well, so she's also possible het pied. Okay. And so eventually the goal is to get her into DG pieds. Um, right. or DG clown pie, start stacking and stuff like that. This year, since I don't have a good pied male to put with her, we're doing a pastel lesser Enchi het desert ghost. Oh, okay. So pastel is, even though people give it crap because it's an early, you know, yeah. old gene that pastel oh, yeah. and desert ghost is a must. Goes, yeah, goes, I mean, it's clean. Yeah, yeah, that pastel desert ghost just cleans things up super, super bright. And then you add it into, to th uh, that's going to be incredible. You said Enchi as well? Pastel Enchi. Uh, lesser. Oh my gosh, goes. that's yeah. going to be amazing. That's going to be a great, great thing. So wow, that's so essentially you get lemon blast, NG kingpins, desert ghosts. Right? They're going to be like blinding. That. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. So that is cool. All right, Brian, I got a little surprise for you that I wanted to add to the end of this. I've not had a chance to come see you at the Reptarium yet, right. but we are making plans to get there. I hope you can come. Um, yeah. I reached out to Jay and to Beth. By the way. Hi. Beth was a huge supporter in all this. She was Beth is great. Fantastic she, Beth help is getting amazing. this done. Yeah, so. it's awesome. Uh, but I got something here for you. I oh, want yeah. you. Actually, let's go ahead and open the bag first. What do we got here? Things I thought you might like. Oh my goodness. You know I like shirts. Oh my god, I love it. Okay, guys, I was just like, oh my gosh. And periodically, this is great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, this is so awesome. I love it. That is, I love that one for sure. You know I love shirts, so that is great. We well, you know you don't have enough of them, so. Don't have, I actually have a sloth 
drawer in my, in my bedroom. Just sloth clothes? Just sloth clothes. Just in Do you need a sloth clothes? Like I totally got out of bed today. That is awesome. I love this. Is, I really like this one. I'll let you open it, but it's actually for Lori. Okay, so. Um, but it's a little surprise. It's a local. Oh! Here in Montana. Oh, Lori's going to love that. Yellowstone Cellars and Winery. All right. So oh, these like are, they're actually Washington grapes, but they come. Uh, it's here in Montana and everything is done here in, in Billings. Oh my gosh, that's wow. awesome. Here, so. Well, Lori's gonna like you from now on. When you come visit, <laughs> she's gonna treat you better. So that's awesome. If I bring more wine. If you bring, no, no, just one wine's fine. Yeah, I'll be all right. yeah, yeah, let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Oh my gosh, this is so dope. Are you kidding me? Dude. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is dope. I love it, man. This is so beautiful. Oh my, yeah. Thank so, you, man. So shout, shout out again to Beth, because I, I asked her, About I didn't, the I didn't know that there were six different species of yeah, sloth. Yeah, it's crazy how much, so, Well, I that's did. awesome. It's got the, the technical, the scientific, got the reptarium, Drogo, I love the font on this. The finish is a beautiful. Oh, this is, what, wow. I can't, I can't even thank you enough, man. That is unbelievable, wow. You'll see this up on Drogo's cage. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get back home and hang it up. Oh, and by the way, Jason, one last thing. Uh, could you help us dump the waste out of our RV by any chance? Like right into my driveway? Well, do you, do you have like a, a place we can, maybe your backyard or something? Uh, I mean, or I could just send you up the road. There's a place oh. that does it. Oh, Let's really? Go there. I was kind of hoping we could do it here, but yeah. if we go up the road. Go. No, I think the backyard would be better. Yeah, what do you got? I just, the soil. I man. just put the grass in. You're gonna ruin it with the with no, your No, that's oil fertilizer. Water? Fertilizer. Yeah. It's good. Fertilizer. All right, we'll go up the road. We gotta dump this because this guy here. Uh, Did what? he open it? I'm not. I, 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 you're the first one. You're like, yeah, uh, tools, cloth, dude. And, I did not. Uh, <laughs> There was a nugget in there though, but yeah, that's I, your nugget. That's your I nugget. didn't I didn't poop. Unless I, you guys like, did, did someone catch me sleep pooping? <laughs> no, you definitely did it, bro. Somehow, maybe you oh, went there's here. There's a nugget in there, it's you. I yeah. didn't do it. Who else did it? It's the, just us. The guy who dropped off a floor probably. It really does smell. No. And like the furnace is blasting up hot air too. Oh, gross. Ugh. Get me out of this damn hell hole. What? You know, this might be one more fun. Okay, you're good. good. Get, crap today. <laughs> Get the generator on, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna buckle up. It's gonna be a fucking ride. <laughs> it's froze. The crapper is froze up, and we can't. Drain it just it? doesn't make any sense. It's like I've never, I can't even imagine what the heck that's about. <laughs> and we can't drain it because it's the, it's all froze. You guys may not know this, but there are only two states in the entire United States that I haven't been to. One is Alaska, the other is South Dakota. So you guys are about to come with me on the last date in the contiguous United States. Right now, I have just stepped into South Dakota for the very first time. I've got one state to go, Alaska. How awesome is that? And this is where we're gonna end the adventure for today. Tomorrow, we're gonna go see Reptile Gardens, a reptile zoo. Super excited about that, been wanting to see that forever. And then we're gonna stay one more day and see the Black Hills. We're gonna see Mount Rushmore. We're gonna go see some dinosaur stuff. It's gonna be amazing, and I cannot wait to share it with you. And then guess what? Then we're back home, two days guys, and the road trip is over, but I just made it to South Dakota. If you enjoyed this video, right up here, you can hit a playlist of baby snakes, because I know you guys are missing baby snakes by now. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. It's a lot to talk about on our podcast next time. Over here, I hope you're subscribed to this vlog channel. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise tomorrow's gonna be a good one. I'll see you then.